My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I got other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Maybe it all comes down to grills. That's right, outdoor grills, like Weber and Traeger. Symbol, cook. This is the height of grill season, yet their sales are plummeting. <laughs> and I think, frankly, that's the perfect metaphor for the Zany market, including today. Dow closed up 19 points. S&P advanced 0.23%. NASDAQ edged up 0.21%. It's kind of just seesawing. I want you to hear me out about this thing. All right, roughly a year ago, these two grill companies came public. Traeger was first and quickly almost doubled. Then a little bit after, we got Weber, which was much less successful. The book runners had to cut back the IPO dramatically in both price and size just to get the deal done. But only Weber went up, too. Now, one year later, Traeger is down 80% from its IPO price to 3 bucks and change. Weber, which just replaced its CEO when it reported its last, latest quarter, and it was a disastrous one, has seen its stock come down nearly 30% from its steel price. And that's even after it spiked 27% today. And it looks like another one of those short squeezes we've seen so often these days. Hey, maybe Weber is the next meme stock. Now that Bed Bath's been defrocked, stranger things have happened. So what are these two things? That, why are we doing this metaphorical exercise? Has Kramer lost his mind? Well, that happened years ago. Here's what they tell us. They tell us about the broader market. They tell us pretty much everything. See, back during the darkest days of the pandemic, Americans embraced the outdoors, including grilling, as a way safely to see people in person. As long as you were outside, you were much less likely to get or give COVID. So grill sales just surged beyond all. I mean, no one could believe how strong grill sales were. I mean, both these companies came public at the same time. They wouldn't have been able to come public without the grill boom. The big box retailers saw these numbers and went nuts ordering Traegers and Webers to meet the demand. And that's how these two unremarkable companies could raise so much money when they came public. But the grilling team turned out to be short-lived. People quickly got vaccinated, we got COVID under control, and grill sales peaked earlier than any retailer expected. Almost all of these big chains had way too many grills at the top. And they were a major cause of all the excess inventory stories that you keep hearing about at retail. And by the way, especially at Target, which had to get rid of the grills to make room for merchandise that people actually wanted to buy, buy, buy. Traeger's implement. Don't buy. Don't buy. First, the price of the materials you needed to make a Traeger, well, they went through the roof. Think of steel. Second, Traeger made six grills in China. So the container ship expenses and port delays just crushed them and their customers. Third, and this one's a big one. Grills last a long time. When you buy a real good one, which is a Traeger, you don't need a new Traeger the next year. Hey, by the way, uh, both Traeger and, as I mentioned, Weber roared today, and I think this is actually an amazing time to do some sell, 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 sell. Of course, grills themselves are just one category amongst many, many where we saw the same emblematic exact story. Hard goods caught fire, and we quickly ended up with a glut in each one of them. Just well, think about how the work-from-home craze drove sales for extra computers, for TVs, for furniture. The retailers chased every one of these, ultimately double-ordering tons of the stuff that they turned out they couldn't need and didn't sell. The ramifications are extraordinary throughout the economy. Companies that were pumping out televisions and game devices saw sales plummet once we felt safe going out again as the pandemic waned. The retailers got stuck with way too many entertainment devices of all shapes and sizes. They had to slash prices to get rid of them. Because they needed the space for new merchandise that's more in demand, like back-to-school clothes. They are still bearing the brunt unless they took the charge like Target did and moved on. The personal computer industry geared up to meet this greatest demand wave that it had ever seen, thanks to the rise of remote work. But once again, like grills, they placed too many orders, made too many machines. That caused huge swaths of the semiconductor industry to go boom and then bust, led by Micron, but followed by anyone who made parts for personal computers like AMD or Intel, these companies are still trying to cope with the collapse of sales, which is down double digits. That's never happened either. Just like grills, you don't need a new computer every year. Furniture, 
Business was booming thanks to the pandemic, but then sales hit a huge wall once people finished their COVID era remodeling. Meanwhile, the furniture makers had already placed huge orders open for stuff that came in months late due to supply chain mishaps. You know, the stocks of RH and Wayfair were just crushed. Some pandemic stocks we knew would be in for a world of hurt as life went back to normal. We all knew, like, you know, Peloton, I mean, a genius, huh? like DocuSign, Zoom. That's not what I'm talking about. See, nobody thought that suddenly ingrained consumer habits would change so rapidly this year, with the boom turning into a bust in a few months' time. While unwanted backup orders were trapped out at sea or waiting to be unloaded in our terminal congested ports. At times, this merchandise was written off before it even got to the stores, before it got out of the boats. This rapid change of fortune has been wreaking havoc all over the place. Take the semiconductor industry. For ages, we've designed chips here, then outsourced the manufacturing to Taiwan or South Korea because it's so much cheaper there. Suddenly, though, China's gotten more belligerent. So sourcing most of our chips from Taiwan is a huge national security issue. In the end, the federal government scrambled to pass major subsidies to promote domestic semiconductor manufacturing here, Ohio. Of course, this bill would have been a whole lot more useful if they passed it a year ago. Until very recently, we had some very severe chip shortages because almost every semiconductor manufacturer decided that big money was in high-performance chips, the ones that go into uh, the big uh, uh, data, data uh, centers that we hear about, not the cheaper chips, which, by the way, are called uh, feature-rich chips or full-feature chips that are used for machinery, that are used for trucks and for cars and for all this stuff that's digitized that didn't used to be. But it, practically every industry has been trying to digitize their products, and there haven't been enough chips available because of that, especially the auto industry. Too many chips for Amazon, not enough for Ford and GM. That tightness is now letting up, though. Cisco reported a terrific number, first of many, I believe, because its chip shortage has eased to the point where the company can meet its orders on time. We own the stock for the Child Trust. I told investment club members at our 1020 morning meeting that you can still keep buying the stock. And I believe that even now. I would continue to buy Cisco. Why? CEO Chuck Robbins just told us that Cisco has excellent visibility. I think it's the best they've ever had, which means you can trust the numbers. And you understand my job, and I'm right behind yours, is my uh, squawk on the street said, a lot of my job is to gauge things. And I gauge the uh, level of confidence of Chuck Robbins, CEO, as the highest I've ever seen. He's been there seven years by Cisco. But while the semiconductor shortage is easing up and semiconductor equipment maker applied materials said as much as in tonight's good quarter, it's not easing up evenly. The automakers are still struggling to get enough chips. Again, like grills, I'm worried that by the time they get them, we'll already have a car glut, especially if the Fed keeps making it more expensive to get financing. Could change on a dime, though. These changes are happening everywhere with miserable consequences. We're now getting some great demand for electric vehicles, but we lack so much of the infrastructure to build what's needed. The material side is a nightmare, and it's not made easier by the fact that lithium, a key input for batteries that used to be plentiful as sand, has become scarce because of foreign government intervention. It's something that Elon Musk talks about all the time on his conference calls, which, by the way, are very funny. We had too little gasoline in May. Now we got too much in August. We didn't have enough Stanley Black & Decker Whirlpool products. Component costs have gone through the roof. Now we have too many, way too much with Stanley's product. I worry that Whirlpool's going to be hurt and slow down. We couldn't fly, so the aerospace layoff soared. Then we could fly, and there weren't enough planes or pilots. Ticket prices plummet, and then ticket prices roar. And then they come down again. No one knows what to do. That's ultimately the real issue. We have never seen so many booms and busts occurring almost simultaneously. Which brings me to the bottom line. In that kind of environment, you can't really plan. You just have to guess. And 2022 will be known as the year when many businesses and portfolio managers guess dead wrong. Let's go to John in my home state of New Jersey. John. Hey, Jim, John, Hoboken, New Jersey. Big shout out to you. I was, I was in Hoboken. I was Hoboken on Monday. Oh, my God, Hoboken is just smoking. I, I got to get a place there. What? It's fantastic. Well, come, come, you can hang out with me, Jim. Just give me a buzz. But anyway, Done Jim, your big way, shout John. out Just give me a time. 2018 commencement, she, uh, um, commencement speech, uh, Ray Bucknell, University. You did an outstanding job. You like job. that one? My daughter is also alumni 2018. Oh, I'm so good she heard it. I was a little, I was a little, uh, I was a little out of control. I know. I showed no. the 57 rejection letters I got when I got out of co uh, college. You but go ahead, let's make some money together. Thank you. You John. crushed, crushed it. it. Uh, today, Thank my question, Caterpillar. I've been increasing yeah. my position over the last 10 years. My portfolio has a sizable amount. What's your look at five to 10 years out? Is it the best in sector? Will it be best in sector? I'll tell you what. 
John, just like you said about Bucknell and your fantastic daughter, you got horse sense. I think caterpillars are major fun. I think Uppleby's done some fantastic things that rationalize. I think that stock's buying 180, 190, 180, 190, and then boom, 250. Just a prediction. Let's go to Brad in California. Brad. Yay, Jim. This is Dodger fans rooting for a wild card for your Phillies. Anyway, oh, my you. question we can use one. But, you know, it's a little yeah. – they got a lot of good teams in that National League. There, there is. It's, it's going to be – the playoffs are going to be very exciting. Oh, they are. Um, they are. And, it's, you know, and I, I love that you bring them up because I, I watch the Phillies every day. We, we had a bad one last night. What's going on? I knew you did. My question uh, is uh, pertaining to Macy's and given the – choppy economic conditions and all the headwinds that retail reports recently all over the board. Your thoughts about Macy's and their quarterly report due next week. I, look, I, I am a big believer in, in Jeff Gannett. I, look, I know that these uh, box stores are out of favor. I think he's doing a good job. The fact that this is selling at four times earnings is nuts. I would buy that stock. They fixed the balance sheet first, which is what Gannett should do. Now they have great merchandise. I think that Bloomingdale's is worth the price of that stock. I mean, I, it's, it's insulting to Jeff. It's insulting. Jeff, you're I mean, you're going to come on Monday, okay? Anyway, am I getting wrapped? I think I'm getting wrapped. I was having so much fun jumping over with the Caterpillar. I used to be in the long jump. Didn't get that far, but I was in the Penn Relays Championship of America. You didn't know that. There's more, like, as Brian Sullivan says, there's an RBI. It's a random, random batting average or something. 2022 will be known as the year when many businesses guess wrong, but not on this show. We don't guess. Man Money Tonight, Generac helps power a host of industries, but can it help power your portfolio? I'm checking in with the CEO. And this market is looking a lot different than it did just a couple of months ago. So is your portfolio equipped to handle whatever is thrown at it? Well, that's why we play M. Hi, diversify. Uh, we can see if your portfolio can pass muster. And then Synopsis reported top and bottom line beat. No one's ever heard of it. Well, we're changing that tonight because we're going to sit down with the top brass. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.